So, yeah, uh, let's finish with the SSL today. Uh, so, uh, last time we started uh, discussing uh, uh, TLS and SSL. And uh, uh, basically, uh, if you remember, we discussed the list of uh, ciphers and basically what kind of cryptographic algorithms uh, we, uh, uh, we can use in, uh, in uh, SSL. So this is uh, an example of a kind of uh, ciphers because the sender and receiver need to agree what kind of protocols they need to use. And then uh, we, we will see how this can be done, but this is just the list. So if you see this as cipher in, for example, SSL. Uh, so let's let's take another one. Let's say this one, for example, this one. So here it means what? Here, if you can read it. SSL. So SSL protocol. Then RSA for digital signatures. Okay. Then 3DS4 for encryption for symmetric key cryptography. Okay. Then this EDE. Electronic. Oh, yes. EDE stands for what? Oh, yeah. Encryption, decryption. Encryption, decryption, encryption. Because you will use three, three uh, iterations of uh, DES. You will not encrypt, encrypt, encrypt. You will encrypt, decrypt, and then encrypt. And then in the decryption side, you need to decrypt, decrypt encrypt, and decrypt. The opposite. Okay. So these are st uh, they are related to the three uh, iterations of uh, DES. Then CBC. Sorry, chain block chain cipher. Okay. And then SHA. And this is for hash. Okay. So all, all the algorithms are, are here. And uh, uh, this is called the cipher. Um, yeah. Uh, then, uh, yeah. Uh, so all this is just introduction. Now, how the algorithm works? How uh, the sender and receiver? Because Encrypting and decrypting data, this is basically at the end. Basically, once you agree on the key, uh, you agree on the cipher and the keys, etc., you start exchanging data. But the uh, all what you uh, you need to do a lot of stuff before. You need protocol itself, you need to agree, like a, like in, T, in TCP protocol, you need to the three way handshake. Here in SSL, there is uh, a set of steps that, that you need to do, and for that, we need to make the difference between a session and a connection. Okay. Remember last time we, we discussed that. Uh, so basically, um, it says in a session one party has the role of client and the other role uh, the other role of, of, of a server. So in a session you have a client and a server, and in a connection you have just two peers. Okay. Now uh, why we discuss this? Basically because uh, when you use SSL you need the notion of session and connection. Okay. Why? Uh, basically, you uh, initially, this is the client, this is the first, so basically this is the web browser, this is the secure server. Okay? Uh, then you establish a session. When you establish a session, you agree on a certain parameters. Okay? You, you exchange a certain parameters with the, with the server. Then, the connections, these are several uh, connections that, should, that can be open within one session. Basically, the data exchanged here is good to open several connections. Okay. So you might try to uh, uh, get some interaction or interact with the server somehow. Then that interaction stops, and after a while, you need to open another type of, of, of interaction. So basically, this corresponds to different connections, and the session is the same. Okay. So uh, um, among this is the uh, session parameters, what kind of information uh, we need to uh, keep for, uh, for a session. So you need the session ID, the uh, certificates, because certificate does not change from one session to another, uh, from one connection to another, they don't change. Uh, compression method, the cipher suite, when you agree on a cipher suite, this is good for all the connections inside the session. Uh, the master secret, uh, which is, uh, you, you do it only once, and then, because remember, master secret is used for what? We, we, we discussed a little bit last yeah, yeah. Generate all the keys. Generate all the keys. So you agree on a master secret, then you use it to generate all the keys. So, as it seems here, uh, you agree on a master secret from one session to another. In all the connections belong to one session, you keep using the same master key. Okay, master secret. 
And here, this is, is resumable, just a bully saying uh, you can resume that session or not. Uh, these are the connection, uh, the information you need for every connection. Whenever you need to open a new connection, you need to set all those uh, parameters. So, you have um, server and client number numbers. These are used for, uh, yeah, as, as uh, freshness. Uh, then you have, we, we said last time, every, how many, how many keys are um, every user need to generate, need to have? Six. We said six keys, not only one key. Here you need six keys. So basically, you need a server, right, Mac secret. This is for? Mac. Mac. This is for what? Uh, it's encrypted. It, it, it stands for what? Mac. Somebody, somebody to, to say it this time. Yeah. Come on, I forgot. Well, that's why I asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. What you have done is that this may mean several things. But Mark, I think we saw it in, in, in the hash uh, function lecture. Yes. Mark it stands for <laughs> message authentication code. Authentication code. Message authentication code. Okay. So, what is the difference between message authentication code and hash? It's, it needs a key. So, it's kind of, not, I will not say encrypted, but it, re it requires a key as input to compute the hash. So, it's a, a keyed hash. A map is a keyed hash. Okay? Not encrypted. Different. Okay? Um, so, but we have two here. We have uh, server write mat secret and client write mat secret. Again, all this we, we, we said last time. One minute two. Hmm? One minute two. One for each side. One for each direction, remember? Uh, yes. So basically, you have the client and the server. Client and the server. Uh, normally, you say if I need a symmetric key cryptography or, or some shit map here, uh, I need just one key for. for uh, for uh, encrypting the data in both directions, but in, in, uh, in uh, SSL, basically you need the key for every direction. So if you, you need to encrypt data <coughs> from client to the server, you need key one. And if you need to encrypt data from the server to the client, you need K2. Okay. Now K1, it is used by the client for encryption, but also the server needs to know about that K1 because it needs to decrypt the data. So both K1 and K2 should be known by both parties. Okay? So you need to uh, uh, map secrets for every direction. And then you have these server write secret and client write secret. These are what? Huh? <laughs> these are the encryption keys, symmetric key encryption. Okay? So basically, and again, we need two, one for every direction. Okay. Server write secret and client write secret. And then it's symmetric. So it's symmetric. symmetric yeah. So it's symmetric, isn't it? One key. It's the same thing. We discussed it last time. So basically, it's symmetric in the sense that you need to use the key to encrypt and decrypt. Yeah. It's the same key. So it is symmetric. But we need two keys for uh, for uh, for every direction. So one key for every direction. Okay. Same thing, k1 is symmetric and also k2 k2 is also symmetric because it is used here for encryption and here for decryption. Mm -hmm. but, I have the, hmm? but I have the key, so I can encrypt with the same key. You can, but in SSL for further yeah. uh, security, they use two. <coughs> Asymmetric key cryptography, when you encrypt with one key, you decrypt with another key. Yeah. You see the point? Okay. So, and then we have initialization vectors. Initialization vectors. This is used for what? For the chain block ciphers. Okay, so basically, uh, remember when you, uh, you use your, uh, you split your data into blocks and then you start uh, encrypting them one by one. Okay, your encryption. Okay, so remember in, uh, and then obtain the cipher here. Okay, remember in uh, chain block ciphers, basically, uh, it's not as easy as this is called what? 
The ECB, Electron Code Book. Okay. When you uh, both, you know, all the uh, encryptions of every block are completely independent. But in chain block ciphers, and they are not uh, independent. Basically, the, imp the output of this encryption, it is used here. It is stored with the data, uh, the second block data, and it is uh, then encrypted. And the same thing, here you're going to use exactly the same thing for every block. But the, pro uh, the, the point here, we need to XOR this with some uh, some uh, uh, some initial value, and that value it's called the initialization vector, and you need to have it. it's constant. Uh, yeah, and you need to have it not because it, 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 these are the initial initialization vectors used for chain block for the first uh, any block. Okay, and then the sequence numbers. These are similar to uh, TCP uh, sequence approval numbers. So again, these are the information you need for every connection. And a session can hold several connections. Okay. Now, the client and the server have six different cryptographic secrets, three read secrets, and three write secrets. You, you see what are, what are those? Uh, what are those uh, so basically, uh, have six, for the client has three uh, read secrets and three write secrets. What are the three read secrets? You have the uh, the Mac key, uh, the Mac key for encryption, the symmetric key for encryption, and the initialization vector for encryption. These are read. Uh, sorry, uh, the opposite. When you say read secrets, means for decryption. Right? For decryption, you you have some you received some encrypted data. You need to decrypt it, so you need to read that, uh, that, uh, that data. Basically, you use your read secrets. Okay? Uh, so, one for Mac, one for uh, symmetry key, and one for initialization vector. The same thing, the three write secrets are the three encryption secrets. Okay? Yeah, here, uh, the read secrets of the client are the same as the write secrets of the, of the server. Right? You, 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 you see what's the story? Yes. Clear? Oh, yes. <coughs> now, what are the uh, protocols? SSL, it's SSL protocol, but basically it's composed of four uh, protocols, which are the handshake, the change cycle spec, the alert, and the record protocol. Okay? All these are for establishing the session and connection. Okay? And alerting if something wrong happens. Okay? And record protocol is the one for sending and receiving data. Now, uh, let's, uh, we'll, we'll go through them one by one. So, the handshake protocol. So, this is the handshake. It, it is composed of four uh, phases. Okay? The first one is establishing security capabilities, then server authentication, then client authentication, and then uh, finalization. Okay? So, we're going to see them one by one. The phase one. So, how it works. The phase one is composed of two messages. The client will send the client hello. The server will answer by the server hello. And this is the step where you uh, agree on the cipher suite. What kind of protocols we can use? Okay, it doesn't need to be secure. Okay, this is why it's done. Uh, I think everything here is done in clear. Okay, so what you, you want, uh, the client hello is composed of the version of SSL, uh, then some random number, the client random number. Again, it doesn't need to be uh, uh, secure uh, or encrypted here. Uh, because we, what we need to check if we need to make sure it is, uh, uh, it has not been modified, so it sh should have integrity. And integrity will be checked later. Okay. So client random number, then the session ID, uh, the cipher suite. Here, cipher suite, the client will send the list of the cipher suite. It can support, it can use list of them, and the server will pick. Okay. So here it sends the, the, the list and the uh, server will, will pick and compression method if uh, compression is uh, the compression methods here. So it will send a list of uh, compression methods. Yes. How, how does server will select the cipher suite? It will pick one of them, it has a certain algorithm. So it basically it needs to pick one of these which also it can support. Hmm. I think it's, it's, uh, it has some uh, preference using an algorithm I guess. Version, uh, so the, the server hello, it will send back a version, the server random number, uh, then the session ID, and the selected cipher set, only one. So the server will pick. 
and it will pick just one. And also, if compression uh, has to be used, uh, the selection uh, compression method. So after this stage, or after this phase one, the, uh, the uh, client and the server, they know the both random numbers, okay? And they know uh, the uh, cipher uh, suite to be used and the compression method to be used. So uh, the client and server know the following: the version of SSL, the algorithms of key exchange, message authentication, and encryption cipher suite, and the compression method, and the two random numbers for key generation. Next phase, phase two. This is server authentication and key exchange. Now the server needs to authenticate itself to the client. This is the first. Uh, I mean, the first to be authenticated. So what it does, it, the server will send uh, its certificate and in particular the chain of certificates. Why? Why it needs to, sh to send the chain of certificates here? Because we said that the, uh, the hierarchy of the uh, yeah. certification is actually chained. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't just send its certificate, only its certificate. It will send the certificate in addition to the information that the client might, might use to check if that certificate is correct or not. So it will say, the, like the reference, okay? like a, you, you, when you specify your name, you specify the name of your father, of your grandfather, or all, to, to have better any authentication. So here's the same thing, it's in the certificate and the chain of the certificates up to the uh, some uh, known or common uh, certification authority. Okay? The chain of the certificates then the server public key, so basically it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's part of the certificate, okay? the, the public key of the server. Um, and then uh, certificate request, of course the server needs, to, uh, the client needs also to send its own uh, I mean, uh, uh, certificate and public key. And the uh, server will send, uh, will, uh, will uh, specify a list of accept acceptable certificates and acceptable authorities. Okay. So, so that the uh, the client can send the right certificate with the right certification of, uh, chain. And server handle down, this is an empty uh, uh, message uh, saying that uh, the server is done sending this authentication data. So what's the difference between the chain, uh, chain of certificates and the list of acceptable certificates? No, here, this is the, this is the actual chain of certificates. It's now, the, the, the client needs to send the same. And here the server will tell that client, okay, I can accept only those certification authorities. Okay. So even the client has to do it. Yes. Uh, at phase two, so after this phase two, the server is authenticated and the client knows the public key of the server if required. Okay. Th third phase, client authentication. Now the client needs to authenticate itself. Okay, and the client authentication, um, uh, chain of, uh, certificate of the client, the chain of certificates, and then uh, client key exchange, it will send its own uh, public key. But here, I was reading it uh, just uh, before the lecture, uh, the client key exchange, this is where the client will send the pre master secret. See, the pre master secret, which is the secret used to generate all the keys. It is generated out of the two random numbers that, that has been exchanged in the first phase. The two random, the client random number and the server random number. So you take those two random numbers and there is an algorithm to generate a pre-master key using the random generator, etc. Okay. Now, this is done by the client. The pre-master secret key or the pre-master secret, it is computed by the client. Now the client, of course, needs to send it to the, uh, to the, uh, to the server because they need to generate the same keys. They need to agree on the same keys, okay? Now, the client needs to, uh, uh, will generate that, and it will send it to the server at the stage. So it will send its own public key, but also the, uh, the pre-master secret. It's not here, it's not specified here, but it's not understood, okay? So basically, the key exchange is done exactly here. The pre-master secret, pre-master secret. Uh, then it sends a uh, uh, certificate verified. So basically, here the uh, the um, the client to prove that he owns the public key, it will compute a certain hash value, 
Okay, I think hash of all those uh, of these two messages or something, some some uh, known data, and then it will um, uh, hash it and sign it. Hash and sign it with its private key. Basically. Okay, to show or to show to the server that yes, I am the one who has that public key. Okay, so this is hash code to prove certificate. Okay, um, clear so far. So this is the client authentication phase, basically. Uh, in this client authentication phase, the client authenticates itself, and it will send the pre-master uh, secret. Okay. So after this, the client is authenticated for the server. Both the client and the server know the pre-master secret. Okay. When the client sends that, and of course encrypted, okay, it uh, both of them will uh, will know the uh, the pre-master secret. Okay. Now the last phase, which is finalizing the handshake protocol, uh, the finalization. Basically, um, we will send a, a packet called change cipher spec value. We're going to see it uh, uh, in, a, in a couple of slides. Change cipher, uh, cipher spec. So basically here, just turn the uh, encryption to on. Okay, basically it's off now. You cannot use the, uh, the keys to, uh, to encrypt, etc. And when you send this packet, basically you turn it on. So basically you can send data uh, using the symmetric key uh, protocol. We will, uh, I will give you more detail about this. Then, the finish it here, this is the integrity. To make sure that all the previous packets, because some of the previous packets have been sent and cleared, right? In particular, the first step. Now, this is a step to make sure of the integrity. So, what you do, you take all the previous messages that you sent, I hear from the client, that you sent, and it will compute a hash and will sign it, and send it to the uh, to the uh, to the server to make sure that no previous message have been modified on that. Okay, this is also signed. It is signed also. Signed and uh, hash and some integrity and uh, authentication. Okay. Or, uh, yeah, authentication or authentication. Okay. Now the uh, server will do the same thing. It will turn on the uh, uh, protocol. Uh, it is symmetric keys for the protocols and it will uh, take all the previous messages it sent uh, compute a hash out of them and then sign it, sign them using its uh, private key and send it to the to the server, uh, to the client okay. so this will end the handshake so basically after this stage both the server and the client they have the pre-master secret they already generated all the six keys okay and they are ready to exchange data using uh, uh, any uh, encrypted data. So after phase, the client and server are ready to exchange data. Okay. Now the next protocol, which is exchange cy uh, cipher spec. Uh, we saw one packet of this protocol. This uh, is a little bit intermixed. The handshake protocol. It uses one message from the uh, from the change cipher spec uh, protocol. So the change cipher spec protocol would say, okay, uh, it's it's not easy to see the need for for it. Basically, it will like a switch, turn on or off, turn on the uh, uh, the, uh, the encrypt, encryption process, so you will be able to encrypt and uh, decrypt data, okay, and you of course to exchange. Uh, yeah, this is what it, what it does. Basically. So uh, this this is how it works. This is the change cipher spec. Um, so initially, when you agreed on the um, pre-master secret, what you're gonna do with the pre-master secret? What you're gonna do with the pre-master secret? Generate, yeah. Generate all the keys. Okay. So these are the keys, but the keys are in pending state. They are in pending state. Both the right secrets, uh, the right keys, and the read uh, keys. Okay. This is basically the uh, cipher max. Basically the um, there should be six, right? Uh, six initiated vector, I think uh, it's, uh, it's only one. Uh, it's constant. Huh? It's constant. It's not constant. Initiated vector is not constant. It's also generated by the uh, pre master secret. But um, I think it's considering the uh, initiation vector as just uh, one. Uh, so there are two. Yeah, they are two. They are two initiated vector, but, but you need both of them, right? You need both of them. Uh, Anyway, uh, I think in this in this representation probably they use the same initiative vector in both directions. Anyway, so the keys 
will be in a building state and you need to uh, uh, turn them on, basically uh, make them in active state, change their states to active so that they can be used. So what you're going to do, you send change cipher spec from the client to the server and here this is to enable this direction. So this will enable the keys used to send data in this direction. So basically these are what? From the client. Which type of keys? The right. So see here, after you do this, the right keys of the client are in active state. But the read are so impending because the read keys need to be activated by the server. Okay. Now, and for the, the same thing for the, now for the server, the read keys, which are the same as the right keys, the right client keys, are in active state. And the, the right ones of the server are still impending. Now to turn these into uh, active state, what, what needs to be done here? Sorry, so the server needs to do the same thing. It needs to enable this direction by sending the change side respect to the, to the client. And then, at the last stage, both of them, the right keys uh, and the read keys, will be in active state, same for the, for the server. And basically they are ready for, for, uh, for the same thing. Okay. So, change side respect, this is only what it does. It turns the keys from pending to active. Okay. Uh, yes? Is it only done once or uh, while it's changing? Well, so basically, this is for a connection, right? Uh, for a connection, yes. So once you generate uh, any keys, you need to do this. After that, uh, uh, after the, so basically, is it possible to like halt or pause the uh, um, the keys or the encryption process and then make it wait for for some time and then resume it? I don't know. I don't know. Basically, uh, wait a minute here. Uh, this is the other closely defined expected bad record no certificate. Uh, I can tell you if if uh, there is a situation where you need to do that, I don't know. Because if you are not exchanging passwords or something, you are just the same data. Regular data. No, because here the change cipher spec back area message it is there to turn the keys from pending state to active state. But I don't think it can be used for turning it in the other, the other direction, from active to pending. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Just Google it. You can have the answer. I cannot tell you. Um, now, the alert protocol, this is, these are things that uh, might go wrong. And this is the, uh, basically the, uh, the, the it's, it's composed of one part. So whenever something wrong happens, uh, one party will send one of these messages to the other party. So for example, uh, the compression failure. Handshake failure, no certificate, uh, certificate unknown. So things that might go wrong, okay, in the uh, SSL uh, uh, protocol. Uh, the last one is the record protocol. Record protocol is for um, encrypting the data, basically. And this is how how it works. So you have some um, <coughs> some data you need to send uh, in an encrypted way. What you're gonna do? You split it into uh, fragments. Okay, you take the fragment. Then you compress it if compression is used. Okay. Then you obtain a, a, a compressive message. Okay. Then you compute um, the MAC. You compute the MAC. How you compute the MAC? The message authentication code. Remember the difference between hash and MAC. MAC is a keyed hash, key using a key. So you take the compressive data, you compute the hash. Then you take the hash and you uh, use the uh, the MAC secret right key. To generate uh, uh, a MAC. Okay. So basically, uh, uh, hash. Um, no, basically, it's not the, the same uh, process. Basically, the, the same hash function will take the uh, compressed data, some other values, and then uh, these are the constants, if you remember the hash, uh, the hash uh, algorithm, and then the MAC uh, key. Okay. All this are used to uh, generate. The, uh, the method of authentication code, it will be uh, 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 concatenated to the compressive data, your data basically. And then here it's the encryption where you use your right cipher secret, okay. the uh, symmetric key basically, 
and then obtain the encrypted fragment, and you add to that, so this is the SSL payload, you add the uh, uh, record protocol header, the protocol header, basically, the protocol header of the record protocol. Because, again, um, uh, the, the, the one in charge of doing all this is the record protocol. The protocol part of SSL in charge of sending and receiving uh, data. Okay? Uh, record protocol header. And then uh, this is the final packet, basically. Um, this is the image. Sorry? This is the image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, not really the. Uh, That's RBH, it says RBH header. Record protocol header, compressed fragment. Um, header plus data. Yeah, yeah, of course, this is the header. This is the header. Okay? And this is the. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the payload of SSL, the data itself. The data with the map. Okay. The payload is after the link? Sorry? The payload is after the link? So you have a protocol the, version of the link then? The payload, yeah, after the, after the link, yes, what's wrong? The, 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 this is the link, what's the difference between these two? It's it's continuous. Continuous. Yeah? Continuous. It is the same. Yeah. The same? Uh, yes, but it's just telling the size of it. Yes, the size. Basically, the length should be should it be encrypted or encrypted? Uh, encrypted. Not encrypted. Okay. The length should not be encrypted because it, it's used to encrypt the data. It should not be encrypted again. Yeah. So all this, all what you say in grey here, this is uh, not encrypted. RPH, RPH is not encrypted. The payload is encrypted. So all uh, encrypted except the header. Yeah. Yeah. Clear? You can check this using Wireshark. Use SSL, uh, turn on Wireshark, get the packet, and then see all the components. You're going to see uh, exactly this. That's it. I think now there are uh, message formats, but these are the message formats for every uh, packet. So basically, uh, handshake messages. Um, uh, these are the list of handshake messages we, we saw hello request, client hello, server hello, uh, finish it, etc. Uh, the client hello message, each, each one of those messages, of course. If you, if you need to implement SSL, if it's part of the thing, uh, it might be on the side, basically. Implement SSL. Okay. Uh, I think in one previous semester, one other faculty when he was teaching the course, one of the assignments on a project, basically, implement DES. You can. You can implement it. Here the same thing. If I ask you to implement SSL, you need more details. If you need to send, for example, a uh, client hello, you need to know what is what the client hello message contains exactly. Okay, in terms of bytes. Okay, so this is what it contains. So the protocol, the version, the length, um, yeah, so session ID, cipher suites, compression methods, all this. Um, uh, the component of the client hello. Client hello is it? Uh, is it encrypted? Yeah. It is not. Sent in plain. Okay. Plain text. Okay. Uh, this is the server hello message components. Uh, this is certificate. The, the, the message containing the, uh, uh, the, uh, the certificate, of course, here. Uh, uh, it's a chain. It's, chain. it's not, not just one uh, certificate, you have the chain, list of certificates from the upper uh, certification authorities. Uh, server key exchange uh, message, uh, certificate request message, server handle done, server key, certificate verify message. So, you name it. So, it's just for information. Now, TLS, here uh, just to mention the difference between TLS and SSL. So, uh, TLS protocol is the uh, uh, IETF standard version of SSL protocol. The two are very similar with slight differences, very uh, small difference between TLS and SSL. So, see here, among the difference, basically the version. One is 3.0, the other is 1.0. They are considering it as a difference. But, uh, yeah. Um, uh, the other minor difference, as I told you, in the cipher suite, um, uh, the, the lack of, I think, is the lack of support of Fortessa. Method. TLS does not support Fortessa. Okay, so TLS, SSL supports Fortessa. Uh, I think it's a symmetric protocol. Symmetric. Uh, yeah, for key exchange. Key exchange. Uh, or for encryption decryption. Uh, yeah, so basically, 
TLS uh, does not support this uh, for this one. Uh, it changes. For this one is more compatible or more general. Uh, you know. uh, I think for this uh, is the one used by uh, the uh, uh, U.S. Uh, National uh, Security Agency and uh, So it's a standard. Uh, Yeah, so TLS cipher su uh, suite list. This is the, the full list of uh, TLS. Yeah. So Fortessa is not there. Let me see. Uh, other difference TLS supports all of the alerts defined in SL except for no certificates. Okay. So also another difference. All the alert messages are uh, that from SSL are accepted by uh, are the same uh, in TLS except one. Okay. Another difference. Let's by TLS. Anyway, that's it. So, very small, minor difference. TLS and SSL, they are almost the same. 